Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. After that, we're going to remove all five of our 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel off, the next thing that I always like to do is try to push back the caliper pistons. On this particular vehicle, it has two pistons, one located right here and here inside the caliper. To push these back, what I want to do is just use a nice pry bar. I'm going to carefully get in between this area here, basically the pad and the caliper itself, and then gently pry. Do the same in this one. Now we can move along to removing both of our caliper slider bolts. Do that using this 17 millimeter socket. The next thing you're going to want is either a caliper hook or a strap of some sort. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the upper control arm. Now we can slide this right off of here. Once you have it off, you want to inspect these areas right here. We want to make sure you don't see any fluid. If you do, it's probably brake fluid, in which case you'd have to replace the caliper. Now I'm just going to go ahead and hang this, making sure that I'm putting no pressure on my flex hose so I don't damage it. Let's remove the pads from the brackets. Next, we're going to start removing our two caliper bracket bolts. You'll have one here and one right there. Use your 21 millimeter socket. I'm just going to start this in there, just a couple threads for safety. We'll continue on removing the next one. <laughs> Grab that bracket, fully remove your other bolt. Remove your caliper bracket. Now let's remove the rotor, set it aside. Now that we have the rotor out of the way, the next thing that you want to do is clean up the hub mating surface here. As you can tell, we have a lot of rot and debris on ours. I'm just going to go ahead and sand this down, clean it up, so we can grab our new rotor to install it. <laughs> now once you have the mating surface cleaned up, we're going to continue on on the back side right along here with our brush. Essentially just try to remove any rust that might be located behind here as well. Apply copper never sees on your mating surface. Next, let's move along to cleaning up our bracket. For that, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you remove both of your tins. Set that aside for recycling. Next, we're going to remove both of our caliper slider pins. Let's go ahead and clean these up. So now we have our slider pins cleaned up. As you can tell, this looks pretty good. And especially all the way down where my index fingers are. You can see that little groove. That's essentially right where the slider boot's gonna ride. So you wanna make sure it's free and clear of any debris. Speaking of slider boots, let's go ahead and grab onto this. I'm gonna try to give it a little squeeze closest to the bracket itself, and then we can go ahead and remove it. Once you have it out of there, you wanna just go ahead and give it a couple squishes and then move it around. Essentially, we just wanna make sure it's still soft and pliable and it's not torn or worn in any way. Let's go ahead and remove the other one. We'll set those aside. The next thing I always like to do is clean out the slider ports here. This is the area where those slider pins are going to slide in and out of, so it's super important to make sure it's clean and free of any debris. Now let's continue on by cleaning up these areas of the bracket. You're going to find four corners that all look the same. We essentially want to clean up the areas where the tin's going to be. Once you have all four corners of the bracket done, let's continue on to the slider boots here. Now for these, you want to make sure that you clean out the entire inside of any grease that might be left over inside there. The easiest way to do that is just take a rag. We'll go ahead and twist it up a little bit. We're going to slide it through. 
And now we can just spread out that boot a little bit and then just rub the rag along the inside portion of that. Have a peek inside, make sure you get out as much as possible and then do the same to the other one. All right, next let's just go ahead and take a little bit of our high temperature caliper grease and I'm just gonna go right inside this caliper port right here, especially down near the end where that boot's gonna ride. That's gonna help keep moisture out of the area, keep out the contaminants as well, of course. After that, let's just go ahead and take our caliper slider boot. We have this area right here. It's supposed to slide right in. So we'll just go ahead and pop it in. There we are. Make sure it's nice and secure. Go ahead and grab onto your caliper slider. We're gonna apply some lubricant to that as well. Just make sure you get the entire shaft of the slider pin itself and then all the way up into the groove closest to my fingers here. Once again, this is super important. Now we can just take this, we'll slide it right in. There we are. Press it in, give the boot a little squeeze just to squeeze out any air that might be inside there. That feels perfect. Now we'll continue on to doing the same on the other side. Now we're at the point that we're going to continue by adding some more of this grease and we're just going to essentially go down all the areas that we sanded down where those caliper tins are going to be. For the grease, you only want to use a tiny bit. You don't want it just squidging out all the sides. Once you have that lubricated, let's go ahead and put on our tins here. We're just going to go ahead and slide it right into the groove and make sure you press it in so it's completely latched. Do the same on the other side. Now we can start putting on our rotor here. Let's get this lined up. I always take one of my lug nuts. I'm just going to put it on here and bottom it out against the rotor. That just prevents it from moving around on me while I continue. Now we can take our caliper bracket and our prepared bolts with a thread locker on them. We'll go ahead and slide that right over the rotor. We'll get it lined up, start in our mounting bolts, and then we'll torque them to manufacturer's specification. Now we'll torque this to 122 foot-pounds. Now we can start installing our brake pads. You're going to notice on each brake pad you have these two ears that come along each side. They need to basically fit inside this area. I'm going to start one side down and into the groove here. We'll do the same on this one. Slide it in. You want to make sure that it can float around inside this area. If you had to force it in or use a hammer, you need to go ahead and take this back apart and clean up your brackets a little better. Do the same for the outer pad. Now it's time to continue on to the caliper. We're going to apply some of that high temperature grease right along the metallic aspect of the pistons here. and then along the backside of all three of these ears. This is going to help with vibration dampening and noise reduction. Now we can start putting our caliper on here. We're just going to slide it right over these pads, try to get everything lined up. We'll put in both of our caliper slider mounting bolts. We'll snug them up and then we'll torque these to 53 foot pounds. Now let's just double check our flex hose. You just want to make sure it doesn't look like it's crimped or twisted in any way. If it looks like a little pigtail, you're going to want to go ahead and re remove the caliper from right here, twist it around so it's nice and straight like this one right here, and remount it. Let's just take a quick second, double check everything here, and then we can, of course, get our wheel on. To do that, I'll just get this right out of the way. Let's get the wheel up on here. We'll start on all of our lug nuts, snug them up, get the wheel back on the ground, and then we'll torque the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. Now that the wheel's on the ground, let's torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. 